So the skeletal system serves as the framework of the body and it is comprised of different bones which are hard and rigid structure, mainly made up of minerals, especially calcium. It provides support and protection of the different structures and organs that are found in the body. The bone serves as the storage of minerals and it is also involved in the process of blood production. The skeletal system also plays an important role in the movement. The skeletal muscle attached to the bone and as these muscles contract, they pull the bones and thereby facilitating motion. The classification of the bones. Bones are classified according to their shapes and functions. The long bones which act as levers such as a femur. Each long bone has a shaft or diaphysis and two extremities or epiphysis. Next is the short bone which diffuses concussions such as the carpals. Next is the flat bone which are protective and afford a large area for muscular attachment such as the scapula. And finally, the irregular bones, which have varied functions such as the support and ligament attachment, such as the vertebra column. For the division of the skeletal system, it is divided into three. The axial skeleton is consists of the skull, the vertebra column, the ribs, mandible, and the sternum, skull. There are two groups of bones of the skull. The cranial, those that form the cranial cavity where the brain is lodged. While in the facial, this is the bony framework of the face. This is the mandible. Mandible is the largest bone of the face. It carries the lower teeth and it, it articulates with the squamous temporal bone on either side by condyles. The mandible is described having the body and two rami. Hyoid apparatus is the bone situated between the vertical parts of the rami of the mandibles. It supports the root of the tongue, pharynx, and larynx. The vertebral column is subdivided into five regions, the cervical or the neck vertebrae, the thoracic or the back vertebrae, the lumbar or the loin vertebrae, and then the sacral or the croup vertebrae, and the caudal or the coccygeal or tail vertebrae. This is the cervical or also called as neck vertebrae. So this is the atlas. This is the first cervical vertebrae. The articular process are absent. In carnivores, other foramen is absent. Instead, there is an other notch. The occipital bone rests upon the atlas, the first bone in your neck. The atlas is named after the Greek god Atlas who held up the world on his shoulders. So after the atlas, it is followed by the axis, or the second cervical vertebrae, or the epistropaeus. The axis defining feature is its strong odontoid process, or bony protrusion, known as the dens, which rises dorsally from the rest of the bone. The cervical vertebrae can be recognized by the fact that they are massive and quadrangular, longer than vertebrae in other regions. After the cervical, it is followed by the thoracic or the back vertebrae. The thoracic vertebrae, on the other hand, have facets for the articulation of the ribs. And they have long spinous process. The lumbar vertebrae are short bodies, expanded transverse process. And then after the lumbar is the sacral vertebrae. 
The sacral vertebrae are fused to form a single bone. Generally, the sacrum is described as having the two surfaces, two borders, a base, and the apex. Also part of the eggshell is these ribs, the sternum, and the hyoid. So these are the ribs. Ribs are described as having shaft and two extremities. For the ribs of the canine, it is cylindrical shaft. Always remember, for the ribs, there is always one more pair of sternal ribs than there are sternal segments. The tubercle of the rib articulates with the transverse process of the vertebra with the same serial number. So for the next video, we are going to tackle about appendicular skeletal system.